Yo, what's up everybody? It's your man, Mr. Tim Swain. And in this video, I'm talking about the five things that you need to know after arriving in Ghana. So if you are coming for a long-term stay, these are the five things that you need to do after arriving in Ghana. Keep in mind, they're not ranked in order of importance. It's just the five things that you need to do based off my experiences living here. The first thing you need to do is get your residency permit. So let's just imagine you came from the US, UK, or some other place, and you came on a visa. The reason you need your residency permit is to enable you to basically be legal in the country. And there's a difference between your visa, your residency permit, and your citizenship. The visa is like your short-term stay. So we came on a regular tourist visa, and the visa simply allows you to be in the country for a certain number of days. For us, it was like 60 days. So after that 60 days is up, you're no longer legal in the country. Your residency permit enables you to basically have access of a resident, open up bank accounts, and do other things in the country. And they usually last for about a year. In order to do that, you have to go to the immigration office, you fill out some forms, and then you usually get your residency permit within a couple weeks. In our case, it took probably about maybe one week because we work with the school that I go to and they already have some relationships at the immigration office to assist us. Now, when it comes to your citizenship, I don't know too much about that, but I can tell you there are some other uh, Africans in the diaspora that have come to Ghana and applied for their citizenship and now they basically have the, the full access the rights and the privileges and they have a Ghanaian passport and a passport from the local country. So make sure you get your residency permit. The next thing you need to do is get your money right. Now there's two sides of the money. There is the foreign side and then there is the domestic side or the side here in Ghana. Now on the foreign side, I would recommend you keep your bank accounts open because you never know what kind of business that you may have forgotten to attend to or you may want to order something in your home country online from Amazon or some kind of other online business. You don't want to have all of your money in a, an account here in Ghana. You want to make sure to have some of your resources so that you can do business where you're from. In addition to that, I would recommend that you contact your banking institutions and let them know that you're going overseas and I would do the maximum. So for us, we just told our banks, hey, we're gonna be out of the country for like a year. So if you see any kind of activity going on in Ghana, that's us. And that's gonna enable you to withdraw money from the ATM if you need to, or even swipe your card at a department store if you wanna buy something and you don't get flagged for that. Now on the domestic side, there's a couple things that I would recommend you do. I would recommend you get a bank account. And there are several banks here that you can see in the video. And what this enables you to do is basically have just another account so you can pull cash from and not always have to go to the ATM with your foreign card because you, you know, may get hacked or something like that. I would also recommend that you get registered with Momo. Momo simply stands for mobile money. And mobile money, it's like, it's like Apple Pay, it's like Cash App, it's like Venmo, except here in Ghana. So most of your businesses, most of your merchants, and most people take Momo. So if you want to pay for a service, you want to give somebody a gift, you want to pay for a dentist appointment or something like that, in most cases, people take Momo. Here's just another tip. Sometimes when you travel internationally, people will tell you to take a bunch of cash to Ghana. I personally don't recommend that. Here's why. Because let's say you bring like 10,000 US dollars to Ghana and you lose it or somebody steals it, something like that. If you lose $10,000, it's a wrap. Since it's cash, the bank can't do nothing for you. And somebody's gonna be real happy that they found $10,000, I'm gonna tell you that right now. I chose not to bring a bunch of money with me because I knew that if I lost a bunch of money, then there's no way of getting that back. But if I had to pay over the period of six months or five months before I got the residency permit in my local bank account open, let's say $50 in fees by using the ATM, I'm cool with that. Because if somebody hacks my account, then guess what? The bank is responsible for that money. So everything depends on you, but I would recommend not bringing a bunch of cash with you because the bank is not liable for that money if you lose it. But if you lose some money in your bank account, you gotta do the pros and cons. The third thing I recommend you do is get some connections. 
Depending on where you're coming from, in Ghana there are several kinds of groups. If you're African American, there is an African American Association of Ghana here in Ghana, believe it or not. There's also other types of special interest groups depending on what you do and what you're interested in. If you go to church, you can meet people that way. But the reason I would say get connected is because if you're coming from another place and you've never lived in Ghana, you will go through some cultural changes that um, are just normal, but sometimes it can be alienating, sometimes it can be disheartening, especially if you just want to relate to somebody based off the movies that you watch, the jokes that you tell, the music that you listen to. And if you don't have somebody to connect with on that level, it can be a little bit more of a difficult transition. I used to work in higher education administration, and they say that when students come to the university, we got six weeks to get them connected to an organization, a fraternity, a sorority, or something that makes them feel like they're part of the community. And if you don't do that, you're more likely to lose them. You got to have some kind of a connection with people, a group, or something else, because you just want to vibe with somebody. The fourth thing that you want to get is transportation. So let's just assume that you did not come here with a car. There are four major ways to get around in Ghana, and I have a video talking about those four major ways in detail, but I'll briefly explain those here. The first way is the trotro. The trotro is like your community bus system. So imagine a 12 passenger van that's gutted out and now becomes a 16 passenger van. The great thing about trotros is they go almost anywhere in the whole country and they are the most available and the most economical ways to travel. The other way is your driving apps. That is your Uber, your Bolt, that's what's here in Ghana as well as Yango. So those are your travel apps and you can basically download the app on your phone and you can have drivers to take you, you know, no matter where you want to go. The other way to get around is the taxi. Taxis are probably the most expensive way to travel here in Ghana. Nevertheless, taxis are readily available. If you're located somewhere way, 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 way out far, you may not have this accessibility to taxis, but generally speaking, I've been to the mountains here in Ghana and I'm also in the Great Car region and I'm telling you, taxis are everywhere. And depending on where you go, they can be cheap, but in most cases, they are a little bit more expensive. The last way, obviously, is your personal car if you choose to do that. So make sure you get some transportation once you get here. Last but not least, you want to get communication. That is, how am I going to communicate with people in the country and communicate with people back home? When I first came to Ghana, it was difficult. It was, it was challenging because I didn't know how the system worked. So I bought a phone in the U.S. and I brought it with me. And I also had a phone that I bought in Ghana, which they call a Yam phone. It's just like what I call a throwaway phone. It's a cheap phone just to call people. What I recommend that you do is look into the different companies here. And I think it's like three major companies that do telecommunications. That is MTN, Vodafone, and Airtel Tigo. We are personally with MTN just because it was the first company I went with. And what you're going to have to do is, depending on where you're coming from, you have to basically get a new SIM, put that SIM card in your phone, and you buy what's called credits. Credits are like minutes. They're usually inexpensive, and you can also use your credits to have data. Data is like the internet, so if you want to surf the internet or get on Google Maps or something like that. What I would recommend that you do is, once you get here, just get a cheap YAM phone until you figure out what's the best network to go through. You get one for easily like, let's say... 50 CDs or something like that and it'll give you the basics to call people and communicate with people. Now if you brought your own phone with you and it's unlocked, that's even better because now you could just simply buy a SIM card, register the SIM card, put that in your phone and then instead of buying credits on your YAM phone, you could just buy credits on the phone that you brought and then you can start utilizing it that way. As I said, these are the five things that you need to do once you arrive in Ghana if you're planning on having a long-term stay. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. We're trying to get more subscribers so we can help more people. Peace.